Hello and welcome to video 20 of the series. Uh, in last episode we had a look at uh, how to add logging to the GUI and today I want to have a kind of hello world for charting. So uh, let's have a look. Let's first have, first have a look at the user interface as we have it so far. So um, we have our, we have again this stuff here. Uh, I don't know why this is always enlarged but in the code it is okay. So um, we have filled out the packets, we have filled out the logging area, we have filled out some of the details. And now we want to have a look at charting for the parameters. So uh, if we click here on this, this is a, a notebook. And if we go to the second page, so here we have this, this GTK drawing area where we want to draw the charts. Um, so um, we don't have, we haven't given the name, so I just call it area chart and save the file and basically that's all we need to do for this with clade so let's go back to main uh, as first okay um, create resources first so that we don't forget it um, how do we draw charts in Haskell in the graphical user interface the most used package is the chart package as you see here uh, so this package is just the data structures and the higher level stuff. This will then be translated into a program for a backend. And this backend uh, will then be translated into drawing instructions for specific backends. So for example, with the Cairo backend, we have a diagrams backend, we have a GTK backend, uh, some other things, chart GTK3 backend, we have, uh, this is actually a library I wrote. This is for the FLTK HS backend um, so that you can draw charts on with the FLTK HS um, user interface. And uh, so we will use the chart library. The thing is, um, um, the chart library, so as you see, the backends GTK and S, um, Cairo, these are for the old bindings of GTK and Cairo uh, for the GTK 2 HS and not for GGTK, which we use. So we will do a little trick. Well, not, not really a trick, but yeah, we will see. Uh, the thing is, if you look at the chart library, so you have a lot of things, so you have the plots, uh, render variables, and so on. Um, let's have a look at the, here is the, the link to the to the wiki, to the homepage. And yeah, that's the, that's the wiki here of the GitHub. And here you see some examples, what charts you can draw. And for this episode, my goal is to have this chart, this, just this one example, like in Hello World uh, chart, so that we can see this in the graphical user interface. And you uh, see, we have two code examples which produce the same chart. One is with the easy, um, uh, you see here, graphics rendering chart, easy uh, API, and one is with the more complex stateful. They say stateful. Uh, actually, it's a it's a lengthy uh, thing. So um, what goes on here? So here you see you have the chart, uh, which finally converts this to a renderable, and this renderable is then with a renderable to file is then put into a file. So we we need to exchange this part so that we don't draw into a file. We want to draw into the drawing area, which we have um, just named before. And um, yeah, so basically it's to find out how to convert this into the right types. Uh, so you see, this is, a, as you see the plot, this is an amplitude modulation, so sinus, which is modulated by another sinus. So this is the, this is just the formula for this. And uh, then we have actually two, two sinus functions. One is a, a line value and the other one are these field circles with opaque red. So you have this, this, this the blue one is the, is the function itself. And then so that you will see the dots um, of some sample points, this is the second one. So these are the these two sinusoids and they are combined to get in a layout. And they use lenses. So we haven't used lenses yet. Um, I don't want to go too deep into that. So uh, basically um, in this case, we have this dot at tilde operator which is just set something, set the property. So in this case, we have some a default value. So there's a default class. Um, there's this data default class, which has this def function, which returns a default, in this case, for a plot. 
uh, this this a plot, and then uh, we, with the with the dollar operator we, uh, you apply functions to this. It's a normal normal dollar operator we, we know from Haskell. So and we we apply to the property plot points title. We apply a title with via this lens operation, and then when this is done, we apply the the values. So these are the sample values from the which which have the the x coordinate and the y coordinate is the the AMX or so the amplitude modulation function in this range with these steps. So so zero with a step uh, of seven until four hundred, and here is the same. It's the same function only that here uh, we have uh, not point values but we have lines values. So one is a line chart, one is just points, and uh, yeah, then the color is the color is set, and here the point style is set with filled circles uh, with a radius of two and the color opaque red. Yeah, that's it. And then the layout here is just that the two charts are, are on the same, so they are overlaid over each other. See here layout plots. We also start with a def default value. The plots, the two plots in side one and two. Um, this list of plots is then assigned to the layout plots, um, and the title is given. And then this is just rendered. So. Um, at the first look, it looks complicated, but uh, it really isn't. It's just setting the properties and then getting it somehow to render. So uh, at first, I just want to copy this. Uh, so let's take this. This is an example. Let's change to the code. So currently, we don't have anything for the chart. So let's add a new file, chart.hs. Yep. Again, we have to import real and let's just copy the chart here and the chart itself is not a T, it's a renderable, renderable, I think something like that. And then of course we need to import the charting library. Okay, so we import GGTK as usual, then the graphics rendering chart itself. Uh, the, yeah, okay. And here we have to, uh, to do another thing. So as uh, I mentioned that the chart library does not render to the old Cairo uh, library and not to the one from GGTK. And there is no chart G Cairo library, so I wrote one for another project. So the first thing we will do is uh, I just simply copy that from there. This is chart G Cairo library and I just copy it here. Okay. And um, we add it to the YAML file. So chart G Cairo, right? Let's see if there's something. And it compiles, very good. Um, so this is actually the library. So it's just one, one source file and the important things are, uh, so these are backend specific things. We have this run backend, which then runs this. Uh, so I mentioned the chart will be translated in, in some kind of a intermediate back end program. So this is some kind of intermediate language and the backend will run this program and draw then the chart. So uh, the run backend is then finally, I think the render thing, then renderable to file, will just put it into a file, which we don't want to do. Uh, also the two file, the, and then we have a default environment, which we will need. Um, yeah, and the other things uh, probably we, we, we won't need. So, um, so of course, then we have to, in the Kabal file, we also have to add the, the chart library with the chart G Cairo. And yeah, chart G Cairo is not on Hackage. Um, I simply don't have the time to maintain another open source project. Uh, so if somebody wants to, to do this, please feel free. Just get in contact or just get the code from, from out of the repository and use it. Uh, we need then G Cairo. Yeah, so the difference between G Cairo and Cairo is uh, G Cairo is, is um, from the uh, also from the Haskell key project so that it uses the, the new introspection uh, now the G-object introspection mechanism, the thing is Cairo as a library doesn't really support it. So the G-Cairo is practically basically useless um, 
as it doesn't export functions because it doesn't have this this G object uh, stuff. So there is another thing. This is the G Cairo connector, I think it's named. And this one is um, a replication of the old Cairo library. And there's also another one, a connector in the... I don't remember. I think we only need the connector for now. It's a re-implementation of the old Cairo library, but with the new um, types of, of G Cairo. So um, let's have again a look. Okay, and of course, then we should also add GUI.chart. Yeah, and we don't have renderable in, in, in scope. Yes, so we need some more import. So we need import g Cairo. Graphics rendering chart, graphics rendering chart backend g Cairo, the chart easy API. Uh, we just we just add it because um it's more convenient and otherwise you would have to, to, to use a lot of, of um, qualified imports and so, such stuff. With the easy API, it's, it's, uh, all types are already in place. And then we also need the connector, uh, the import RG Cairo render connector. And here we need the render with context. Let's see. Okay, so let's start. Yeah, and now we get a strange error so that the, 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 the Cairo.hs from, from the chart Cairo library doesn't know what a double is. Yeah, and uh, and that's because uh, we have included it now in the project, and by default, our project uses um, uh, the, the Rio. Rio is a preload, and um, so we say here implicit preload. So that it should use the, the real Haskell preload for now. And so then we don't, don't yeah, so that we don't get other clashes. And yeah, okay. That's good. Then we can go back to chart, and uh, we see that we have an ambiguous occurrence to this dot tilde to the set operator. So for now, I just uh, hide it in Rio. Let's. So this is the chart content itself. So it's not used, of course. So, okay. So what we want to have is somehow I want to have a known chart widget for now. So let's just define one and <clears throat> this chart widget for now it has only the drawing area and we will later add the more fields GTK drawing area. And of course, we need to somehow pass that in. So we need an init chart widget function, like for the main window, which takes this drawing area and generates an chart widget. And this is, of course, a monodial. And for now, let chart widget and uh, let this CV drawing area be the drawing area. And then we return the so, compiles. Um, we want to pass that out and also the chart widget itself, the type, but just the type. Yes, okay, good. Uh, so how should this thing be drawn? 
Okay, so uh, if you want to, to draw something on the drawing area, uh, let's have a look. Drawing area. And in the description here, we find that uh, you have the mouse to realize uh, that in particular display, I uh, don't know, size allocated, and then we have the draw signal. If we want to draw uh, the content of the drawing area, then we need to, to um, connect to the signal. So let's do that. GTK on the drawing area, the, the draw signal, and we, we return the, the, the return value of this function. And this, okay, then we pass it the drawing function and with, the, with this chart widget as a parameter. And this function, um, this partial function will then get also the context, the drawing context. So um, let's do it like this. Then we have also language overloaded labels. Yes, and then we have the drawing function. So the, the drawing function should get a context, the Cairo context, and return an IO bool. Ah, and of course we have this the chart widget, which we pass in here. So uh, context and for now we just return zero true. Uh, a Cairo, yes, of course. This is not. This is a Cairo context. So uh, yeah. So we have it uh, loaded G Cairo as as Cairo. Okay. So now we it compiles though it doesn't do anything much. So, um, good. So the first thing is we, we get the renderable of the chart itself, of this example chart. So um, what we finally want to do is to call this um, from the Cairo connector, we, we have to render this on, the, on, the, on this Cairo context somehow this chart rendered to this Cairo context. So uh, we need to know the G Cairo render and G Cairo connector. And the connector, it has this function render with context. So we, we have to pass in a render action and the context, and then it draws, yeah? And so um, let's first start with this. And it returns, yeah, some result. So render with context, uh, some render value. We don't know what this is yet. And then we pass in the context, this context here, OK? Okay, compiles. Uh, okay, the, the we also ignore the return value for now. Um, okay, so what should this render be? Um, so this render must in somehow be this render program from um, a render value. And this one um, is generated from the uh, there is a function in the Cairo library, uh, the run backend, and this run backend returns this render, ren a render type for Cairo. So we need to do is some kind of run backend. So let's have a look at run backend. So it gets some environment and the backend program, and then it delivers this Cairo render. 
Okay, so let's work our way through back. So we do um, this render is a run backend, and we need to somehow get uh, uh, the environment. And in this case, I, I, I mentioned this in the beginning. We have the default environment, and the default environment itself takes an alignment function. And uh, I just want, don't want to bother too much with the details, so we use the default env. And um, the alignment function is, there are two, two different alignment functions by default. And the, the one we need is for the bitmap alignment, alignment functions. And then we need to pass in somehow this render information, right? So, uh, there are some for, for SVG, if it directly generate SVG, you use something different, but as we draw directly to the screen, we need this bitmap alignment functions. Okay, so, um, and here we need to pass in something. So, um, actually, uh, we have this, this renderable here, which is the chart, and we need to, uh, to convert this into this backend program. And the backend program will convert this to Cairo draw functions. And this render with context will uh, will then draw this finally. Yeah, so a little, little bit complicated. Uh, so this this needs to be a backend program. And uh, the chart library provides a render function for this. And we need to to pass it a renderable in this in this type. Uh, in this case is the chart content. And then we need to provide the width and the height. And of course, we don't have width and height defined. So uh, what should they be? Of course, we should get them from the drawing area, because if you resize the window, the draw function will be called again. And then we need to uh, to know uh, the width and the, the, the height again. So uh, let uh, CV drawing area from the GUI. So let's get out, out of this chart widget. Let's get the drawing area. And then we have um, get allocated width drawing area. And get allocated height. And then uh, as we want to have what is required here are doubles. So we need to convert them from integral And then we have here the width and the height. And this compiles. So I get the warning of the on, on, on the Cairo library, but this doesn't matter for now. So basically, if this compiles, then let's have a look if this also runs. So uh, let's have a look again. We get the width and the height from the drawing area. We passed it to the render function the chart content and the width and the height. Uh, this converts it to this round back and render and we render the contact to the Cairo context. And yeah, that should be it. So the thing is we need then now to, of course, um, we have this module here now, but we need to also initialize this. So we have called this init chart function, uh, init chart widget function yet. So we do this from the main window uh, so let's call it here. And we need to pass it the drawing area. So we, we we need to get this out of our, did we call it chart area? I think so. Uh, and this is a drawing area. And we need to pass this chart area into, and then we have a chart and uh, probably we should add a field which will be a chart widget. Yep. And this chart widget uh, will be this chart. And of course, we have to import it also.
right? Compiles. So let's see if we can build it. And it compiles and it links. Very good. So let's try if we have our Hello World example with the chart. No, we don't have it. Could not find chart area in the Glade file. Okay, so maybe I messed something up here. It's called area chart and not chart area. Okay. So, once again. Yeah. So we have the window, we have the logging you see going on. If packets would come in, we would see them here. Let's switch to the parameter tab and and we have a chart. We have our hello world chart, we have our assign, our amplitude modulation. Uh, it reacts to resizing. Right? Perfect. So that's it for today. We have our chart. Now we have to do the, to make this chart so that it displays not the fixed function, but our values that we get in, that we get streamed in with the satellite telemetry. That's then for the next session. So thanks for watching.